Hi, I'm Francis Hellier, and welcome to my podcast, Metaverse. Dedicated to the emerging world of the metaverse, this podcast aims to demystify and unpack the possibilities of the digital future just dawning over the horizon. In each episode, I talk to leaders in this growing space who are forging this new reality. From innovators in AR and VR, to futurists in crypto and space travel, and forecasters in business and tech. Together, we'll ask the question, what's next? Today, I'm joined by Sandra Hello, head of Metaverse and NFTs at Salika. Salika is a software that seeks to incentivize a global distributed network of computers to run a blockchain platform that aims to increase user scalability through sharding. This makes Zalika one of a number of competing blockchains aiming to grow an ecosystem of decentralized cryptocurrencies. As head of Metaverse and NFTs, Sandra is tasked with ensuring Zalika's use of NFTs includes minting and trading them in an energy efficient way. Her role also includes heading up the company's journey towards the Metaverse, determining what route Web 3.0 might take. Sandra, it's a real pleasure to have you on the show. Welcome to the Metaverse. Thanks, Francis. How are you? Really good. Let's start where it all began. How did your personal journey bring you here into your current role as Zalika? Yeah, so I guess you could say my journey with Zilliqa actually started when they did their IPO in 2017. So I was always involved in the community before actually joining the, the core team. Uh, me personally, I've always been in the crypto space or sorry, blockchain space. Uh, just because of my background, I was always dealing in digital transformation. So it uh, naturally just led towards blockchain. And then I came across all of these interesting projects popping up in, in the industry. And Zilliqa was one of them that I really, really like <laughs> i really love the sharding technology i love the vision that they had and um i just got involved in it since their yes yeah, since 2017 circa 2018 too and then um been a big fan been a member of the community and then i eventually just joined the team and uh, shaped uh, the nft and metaverse divisions like they are now so it's been a pretty interesting journey that's for sure Amazing. Now, head of Metaverse and NFTs, that's a fantastic job title. What precisely does that entail? Um, a lot. <laughs> so um, you have to look at it as two different things. If you look at what Zilliqa is doing right now, we are launching the first um, artist-based, sorry, artist-focused, uh, curator-led uh, marketplace, which is uh, a core aspect of is bridging the gap between the physical and digital world. So onboarding a lot of traditional artists into the digital NFT space and helping them understand how they can attach utility in NFTs to their traditional pieces of work and their art and how they can, I guess you can say, quote unquote, survive in the industry when they've come from a background that's been mainly traditional. Um, and then from a metaverse perspective, it really, the, the metaverse in itself is very new. So th maybe the metaverse has existed previously in esports, but the metaverse the way it is right now and what it actually means is a new kind of venture that people are going into and aiming for so that in itself a lot of what i do really comes down to strategizing uh building out how the future is going to be what are some key pain points that we need to solve what are some um, specific areas that we need to tap into um, target points that we need to build from a product uh, from a product features perspective how to grow the space and how to keep pushing forward with the creator economy and uh, you know just innovation in general so looking at the future and understanding what it would need what it might need and being ready to you know take it on as it comes and be ahead of the game so it's a pretty exciting field that's for sure now among the competing blockchains what makes your company stand out for the rest in your opinion you know i get asked that question a lot and to me i don't really like looking at at blockchain as people being in competition i think everyone has kind of uh, their lane sometimes these lanes merge you know you do have a couple of people who are doing sharding other than zilliqa doesn't mean that they're doing better than us doesn't mean that we're doing it better than them it really just uh, focuses down on the core strategy and the core vision that you are doing there is a difference i believe in action leadership and thought leadership uh, if you look at what zilliqa does we do we sorry no we do we are really pushing forward with the creator economy right now by signing on a lot of uh, you know establishing ourselves within the esports uh, industry within the music industry and also the art industry but also innovating towards having a fully functional metaverse as a service platform for brands entities and individuals to come on and be onboarded into so if you ask me about competition, I would say, you know, the, the more we can innovate together, the better. I do think the future is definitely 
IO. So, you know, th there won't be one blockchain that survives. We all need to work together and push forward. So I hope that answers your question, but I, <laughs> I think all competition is healthy competition. And at the end of the day, it just really comes down to where an individual is comfortable with and happy. I think that's right. And I think lots of these conversations we've had here on the Metaverse podcast have been around uh, collaboration and working together. And also uh, the creativity is something that uh, keeps coming up time after time. It's not just about the technology, about the creativity that surrounds this space. Now, going back a little bit, you this role you have, um, you couldn't possibly imagine that this would be the kind of thing you'd be doing when you were a child growing up. Uh, they would pay your bills. I mean, it, you know, could you have imagined the space we're in right now? You know, funny enough, the space we're in right now is the space you, well, growing up, you hoped we would be at. Uh, I think if you separate each individual and just look at their background and their skills and just the way that they were kind of interacting previously before the entire blockchain, there were certain key points that you had hoped would happen. And now the fact that they are happening makes life much easier. I remember when I was in high school, you know, um, a lot of what the creator economy solves now, giving creators the ability to be in control, the ability to have open borders when it comes to doing business and to connecting with others for collaborations and, and, and you know, pushing that creativity forward. You did wish that that could happen. Did I envision that it would happen this quick? Um, I hoped it would, but no, I think COVID really played a very big part in pushing that mm -hmm. forward, especially because... Um, especially with the metaverse, actually, because I think a lot of brands, entities, businesses realize that if we were to ever hit a pandemic again, their business model slowed down because uh, they were heavily dependent on brick and mortar. So going into digital and into you know, the metaverse itself is the best next step, even utilizing NFTs. A lot of what we do in life centers around how can we always innovate what we're doing and I think we all realized that a lot of people when COVID hit weren't ready for that digital transformation. Um, you know, just going back a bit to Web2, when we say digital transformation, it's taking people from the traditional way into the digital space. And a lot of schools weren't ready to equip their students with going digital. And I think that came as a big shock with, with COVID. So I, I do think that now we are pushing at speeds that no one really planned for, but it's, it's good that it's happening. So uh, it's definitely a good time to be in. It's very exciting. You know, I think reflecting back, people are going to look back at this time and say, oh, my God, I was involved in the next big thing to happen Absolutely. to the industry. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think it, you know, it reminds me certainly of, of the beginnings of the Internet as a thing and how exciting and, and, and wonderful uh, that experience was. And, and look where we are today. Um, definitely. So if you could boil down this excitement you describe and, and this opportunity of the metaverse and into one sort of single thing, what would you say it's about? What's the most exciting thing about the metaverse? I can talk definitely about our vision at Metapolis and our biggest excitement and what we're looking at doing is building the next internet. So a layer that people can interact with that's always open, that allows people to you know, continuously engage in a borderless environment that's open 24 seven. And you, know, you can tap into any location you want to be regardless of where you are. Uh, that for me is definitely the most exciting aspect of what we're doing. Um, over at Metapolis. Now, if I look at it from an NFT perspective, I can definitely say that it's the onboarding of artists into the digital space. You know, previously, digital artists couldn't really bank on what they were doing, but now you have traditional artists who were the top of the crop now fighting to come into the digital space. So kind of, you can see the switch happening. Um, for me, both of these things are extremely, extremely exciting. But do you think that NFTs will be the sort of key tool for value creation in the metaverse? Definitely, definitely. I think NFTs will play a big part as value creation for a lot of industries, not just the, the metaverse. Uh, if you look at the utility that you can attach to an NFT in the future, I think that would be what the core aspect that as creators we build on um, moving forward and businesses should anyways. I mean, the, the whole metaverse essentially should be built and functioning around how NFTs intertwine with the, the build, the strategy and how it moves forward. What would you say to those people that we, I'm sure we both fight against, who believe the world of cryptocurrency is sort of a flash in the pan and will burn out and won't last the, te won't last the test of time? You know, that, that's a very good question. Um, if you go back to history, I think there were always a lot of conspiracy theories a lot, around a lot of movements <laughs> that were happening or a lot of new technology that emerged. Um, people had issues with the telephone and look where we are now when it first came out. So... 
it's all right to be skeptical. It's all right to question what is happening around you. But the one thing that I would definitely recommend is don't have a closed minded approach when you're looking at the, at the industry that you're kind of critiquing. I think it's important to understand what pain points it solves and how it actually does that and the benefit it brings rather than just criticizing for it. Um, I know there are a lot of people who don't believe in the, in the industry or the benefit of it, but at the end of the day, if you look at the innovation that is happening within the space, it's kind of hard to say that this is uh, just a phase or something that people are just jumping on in right now. It's the future. It's definitely going to be the future and let's start treating it as such. No, it's exactly right. And I think that you know, back back in the day, um, you know, we were told that the internet was just a fad and a phase, exactly as you're describing. <laughs> so crypto and, and the metaverse space today, and look look what that's taken us. Now, what does a, a, a typical day look like for you? And, and frankly, is, is there such a thing? There's no such thing as a typical day. One thing that's for sure is that there are back-to-back -back calls. <laughs> that's <laughs> one thing that you're guaranteed. Uh, the, the interesting stuff, or the interesting aspect of, of the industry is that, you know, you go to bed thinking that you've kind of finalized what your strategy is going to look like for the next day or what you want to do, but then you wake up and you might have to pivot because someone else is either doing the same thing or they've kind of innovated that space a bit more. Um, it does come down to, you know, how do you separate and how do you time manage yourself? Because if you want to be involved in everything 24 seven, you kind of burn out really quick and you really just need to understand that, um, there are certain things that you cannot do during a day. So you, <laughs> you need to set up your time to properly deal with what needs to happen. But one thing I can tell you is that back-to-back -back calls, they never stop. So <laughs> <laughs> and we, we live on Zoom now, don't we, as well? <laughs> yeah, our, yeah. Is the, we are living in the Zoom metaverse at the moment. So we kind of, uh, we kind of achieve what we, this is, maybe, maybe the metaverse isn't, isn't as cool as we think. We just end up on Zoom calls all day. <laughs> Um, in, a, in, a, in a recent interview you did with Bread News, you gave the advice that crypto users should do their own research and not fall prey to hype culture or scams. What sort of scams were you referring to particularly and how can crypto users ensure they follow that advice? I mean, look, one, there are scams everywhere, right? I mean, you can go to a store right now and probably get scammed by a piece of clothing that you buy that says it's... Uh, authentic and then you go out get it checked and it turns out it's, it, it's not so you know when it comes to giving this advice i do like to really um tell whoever's entering the space or within the space to always do their own research just check who the teams are check what check what the project is check what the vision is that they're doing um just really get into it don't buy into hype because hype even though it really is beneficial in building that fomo um that fomo aspect of you wanting to jump in before everyone else and be involved in it just be careful, do your research, because I have been, funny enough, I have been a taxi once and I was on a call. He heard me talking about crypto blockchain. And then he was like, as soon as I got off the phone, he's like, oh, I've been scammed by crypto <laughs> so many times. And I'm like, well, what do you mean? You know, how, how did you, how did that happen? And, you know, he, he gave me some names and went into his story. And then I was like, did you look at the teams? Did you look at the project? And he's like, no, my friend told me to do it because he said it was good. So just always do your own research. I, I'm not. I'm definitely not going to be in a position to, you know, come and say this thing is a scam, this thing isn't. But if you trust your gut and you trust what's happening, then I guess that's a good enough evaluation for you to go all in or make Absolutely, your mind up. Yeah. I mean, who hasn't been scammed by banks or credit card companies, for example? <laughs> I mean, I think we all have at some point down the line. Um, in your opinion, I mean, as someone who's really qualified to speak on this as, as anyone anywhere, uh, what do you expect the metaverse to look like sort of in the next sort of year, five years, 10 years time? Again, I'm, I'm definitely going to speak from the perspective of how we're building the future to be. Uh, we want to build a safe space, a place that's inviting for all and that's uh, built around an environment where you can operate and cooperate at the same time without feeling like, you know, the, the issues of the real world are kind of coming into, into the space, such as, you know, I'm just quickly going to mention, for example, bullying, harassment or anything like that. So we are paying a lot of attention on how we can build these safe spaces. Uh, I do believe that the future of the metaverse is going to be one where everyone belongs and everyone connects. And in order to get to that stage, a lot of education needs to play into it. So when we say we're building the next internet, we need to explain to people what does building the next internet mean? How do you actually do that? Um, how do you cooperate? How do you bring people in to collaborate together? Because like I've always said, there won't be one overarching metaverse. At the end of the day, we all will need to work together and make this work. But the only differentiation will be is the features that you will bring, 
we are heavily focused on, on how we can make the metaverse an easier onboarding place or ground for individuals, brands, and, and those looking to enter into it. Um, so yeah, I, I guess for me, it's, it's building a world that's safe, that's open, that's full of engagement, and that allows you to fully be um, immersed in, in any experience, both through XR and you know, however you want to interact with it. If you want to function with AR, go ahead. If you want to put on your Oculus Rift, go for it. Um, so yeah. So aside from your role, um, Asalika, what do you do to relax, Sandra? And do you have, for example, any interesting hobbies? Ah, <laughs> uh, God, yeah, that's a very hard question you got me at. Um, do I have any <laughs> exciting, interesting hobbies? Uh, I did like basketball at one point, but then it got really hard to go and play basketball. Uh, <laughs> how do I relax? You know, I know this is sound. This is going to sound very, very cliche, but I really do enjoy the industry and I do really love my job. So for me, relaxing is shutting off what I need to do, but then going back into the space and just looking at what everyone else is doing. So um, that, with a bit of Pilates, is is a pretty pretty good mix. So um, amazing, yeah, amazing, a, amazing a question. stuff. You, you got me tongue tied for a second there. I should probably <laughs> sit down and read. <laughs> Really we can do this. We can we can do this again another time, and you you know you have <laughs> loads of new hobbies and interests by that point. Um, and so finally, uh, what do you hope the new year will have in store for Sandra? Um, you know, I, I guess just looking at what we have planned for the year, it's it's looking to be very exciting. There's a lot of really interesting projects that are up and coming, a lot of launches that are happening, a lot of partnerships that are progressing. Um, I am going to answer this more as a Zilika Sandra rather than a personal Sandra. So, you know, I'm definitely very excited on what's up and coming with Metapolis, with the NFT projects, with the partnerships, the people that I meet on a day-to-day -day basis. There are a lot of people who are amazing in the space with their projects and the innovations that they're doing in creators. So every day is exciting. And I, I think as we progress into the new year, it kind of stops being a new year and now just starts being a continuous kind of evolution <laughs> of what you can do on a day-to-day -day basis. So definitely exciting times. Wonderful. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure to speak to you. And uh, I very much hope you'll join us again at some point in the very near future. Definitely. Thank you so much, Francis. It was a pleasure being here and meeting you. Thank you so much, Sandra. You've been listening to Metaverse with me, Francis Hellier. Thank you so much to my guest, Sandra Halo, for a fantastic conversation. Tweet us at Metaverse Pod with any suggestions or feedback. And if you enjoyed the podcast, please do share a link on social media. You can sign up to receive an email when every new episode drops at our website, metaverse.fm.